Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. If you aren't moving forward in your life, there is some idea, mode of action, or habit you're so in love with you won't let go of it. The better ambitions have to do with the development of character and ability, rather than status and power. Status you can lose. You carry character with you wherever you go, and it allows you to prevail against adversity. Self-love is the only antidote to the chaos of existence, and if you don't love and care for yourself and your own needs, you will cause unnecessary suffering both for yourself and others. You should be better than you are, but it's not because you're worse than other people. It's because you're not everything you should be. When you are visited by chaos and swallowed up, when nature curses you or someone you love with illness, or when tyranny rends asunder something of value that you have built, it is salutary to know the rest of the story. All of that misfortune is only the bitter half of the tale of existence without taking note of the heroic element of redemption or the nobility of the human spirit requiring a certain responsibility to shoulder. We ignore that addition to the story at our peril because life is so difficult that losing sight of the heroic part of existence could cost us everything. If you don't stand your ground, then all that happens is people push you backwards and they will push you and push you and push you until you fall off a cliff. If you fulfill your obligations every day, you don't need to worry about the future. Truth, virtue, and courage are not necessarily enough, but they are our best bet. So listen to yourself and to those with whom you are speaking. Your wisdom then consists not of the knowledge you already have, but the continual search for knowledge which is the highest form of wisdom. You need to consider the future and think, what might my life look like if I were caring for myself properly? You cannot be protected from the things that frighten you and hurt you, but if you identify with the part of your being that is responsible for transformation, then you are always the equal or more than the equal of the things that frighten you. It took untold generations to get you where you are a little gratitude might be in order. If you're going to insist on bending the world to your way, you better have your reasons. Can you imagine yourself in 10 years if instead of avoiding the things you know you should do, you actually did them every single day? That's powerful. The way that you make people resilient is by voluntarily exposing them to things that they are afraid of and that makes them uncomfortable. It is much better to make friends with what you do not know than with what you do know, as there is an infinite supply of the former, but a finite stock of the latter. Once someone has spent enough time cultivating bad habits and biding their time, they are much diminished. Much of what they could have been has dissipated. Adopt responsibility for your own well-being. Try to put your family together. Try to serve your community. Try to seek for eternal truth. That's the sort of thing that can ground you in your life, enough so that you can withstand the difficulty of life. If your life is not what it could be, try telling the truth. If you cling desperately to an ideology or wallow in nihilism, try telling the truth. If you feel weak and rejected and desperate and confused, try telling the truth. In paradise, everyone speaks the truth. That is what makes it paradise. Tell the truth, or at least, don't lie. It's in responsibility that most people find the meaning that sustains them through life. It's not in happiness. It's not in impulsive pleasure. 